Pakistani President Asif Ali Zadari arrives in former Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto's hometown to observe the fourth anniversary of her assassination. Zadari and Bhutto were married in 1987. Twenty years later, Bhutto was killed at a political rally while she was leading the Pakistani People's Party into national elections. Pakistani President Asif Ali Zardari flew to Gari Kuda Bakhch, hometown of his wife and former Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto, to observe the fourth anniversary of her assassination on Monday. He spent several minutes in prayer at the gravesite of his deceased wife. Bhutto became the first female Prime Minister in the Muslim world when she was elected in 1988 at the age of 35. She was deposed in 1990, re-elected in 1993, and ousted again in 1996 amid charges of corruption and mismanagement. She said the charges were politically motivated, but in 1999 chose to stay in exile rather than face them. Bhutto returned in October 2007 to lead her Pakistani People's Party into national elections. She was assassinated on December 27, 2007 in a gun and suicide bomb attack after an election rally in the city of Rawalpindi. Zardari, who was elected in 2008 on the back of a sympathy vote for Bhutto, has never connected with Pakistanis in the same way that she has. He is expected to address a rally on Tuesday where thousands are expected to converge on her tomb to pay homage to the popular leader. Zardari, in a statement, says the best way to honor Bhutto is to defend and protect democracy and democratic institutions in the country and foil all conspiracies against it. The Iranian Navy continues to conduct exercises at sea with tests of helicopters, hovercraft and submarines. The 10-day drill is not expected to disrupt traffic in the Strait of Homaz. Here's the full story. Iran shows off its military hardware as it conducts another day of naval exercises. State TV showed ships, helicopters, hovercraft and submarines being put through their paces. The tests are part of 10-day manoeuvres in international waters which have taken place for at least four days. They are being conducted in the Strait of Hormuz, the world's most strategic oil transit channel. The military drill comes as tension between the West and Iran is escalating over the Islamic State's nuclear program. Iran said in the past it would respond to any attack by targeting US interests in the region as well as closing the strait. But Iranian authorities have given no indication the strait will be closed during the exercise and it has not been shut during previous drills. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Wednesday. December 28th, 2011. This is my website, ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. Also, if you'd like to visit my YouTube channel, it's ddarko2012. There's a poll up here. How will you approach the new year? Kind of a different uh, different poll, but uh, majority of people so far are saying with more caution and skepticism. And you can go in there and check out the, uh, the other results. Uh, if you'd like to follow GGN uh, with... Um, updates to your email you can get them right here put them in there um, and that's all i have besides uh, uh basically just be prepared um for these uploads on different days i was doing monday wednesday friday and i just did one on tuesday and it was a different format um i included some survival stuff in there and uh, I'm, that's what i'm going to be doing now so just bear with me in the next few weeks as far as how many parts there's going to be out, uh, I'm going to post, and what days I'm going to post them. Um, so, uh, and basically, I'm going to try to be a little more positive here. So I don't want to get sucked into this whole uh, us versus them thing anymore, because uh, it is it does take a toll on uh, on a person. And so I'll try to present this news, and then you can make up your own minds. Uh, U.S. Israel discussed triggers for bombing Iran's nuclear infrastructure. The Obama regime is trying to assure Israel privately that they would strike an Iran military or militarily if Tehran's nuclear program crosses certain red lines while attempting to dissuade the Israelis from acting unilaterally. It says Eli Lake reports exclusively. And uh, remember this story about um, 
uh, uh, Buto's death, the, uh, originally it was what? That, oh, she fell out of the uh, car and, and hit her head or something like that, or she had a heart attack. It was some baloney. Uh, but she was assassinated. And uh, moving on here, we have uh, Panetta is raising the specter of preemptive war, says advocates of a hot war with Iran take some heavy media hits. So it says here, advocates of a hot war with Iran have just taken some heavy hits from a Harvard professor of international relations and two prominent journalists. The professor, Stephen Walls, savaged an article forthcoming, quote, Foreign Affairs Magazine, January, February, by Matthew Kronig's title, Time to Attack Iran, Why a Strike is the Last or least bad option. So uh, basically it says here that the truth is the military strike intended to destroy Iran's nuclear program, if managed carefully, could spare the region and the world a very real threat and dramatically improve the long-term national security of the United States. Moving on here, time to attack Iran. And here's the actual art article right here um, from the CFR, the Council on Foreign Relations, where you had um, Hillary Clinton uh, saying that this was like uh, the outpost for them. And she she almost said, uh, she almost said, but she stopped at the last second that, uh, you know, we we seek out the CFR's, um, uh, you know, counseling, and they tell us uh, uh, what they think and how to do it, you know, basically. So, and uh, you had Cheney uh, doing that as well. So, it says here, U.S. Uh, Fifth Fleet says, uh, they won't allow the Hormuz disruption, says the U.S. 5th Fleet said on Wednesday, it won't allow any disruption of traffic in the Strait of Hormuz after Iran threatened to stop ships moving through the world's most important oil route. Anyone who threatens to disrupt freedom of navigation in an international strait is clearly outside the community of nations. Any disruption will not be tolerated, the Bahrain-based fleet said in an email. It says here, but the... But its navy would be no match for the firepower of the 5th Fleet, which consists of 20-plus ships supported by combat aircraft with 15,000 people afloat and another 1,000 shore. So for a while now we've been told that the Taliban's our enemy. Now we're being told that they're not necessarily our enemy and they're not necessarily our friends. U.S. removes Mullah Omar from terrorist, terrorist list. Says the FBI has reportedly removed the name of Afghan Taliban leader Mullah Mohammed Omar from the list of most wanted terrorists says u.s officials have had several meetings um, with the afghan taliban leaders and moving on here says karzai backs u.s bid for taliban office afghan president has voiced support for a u.s proposal to open a taliban office in Qatar, despite his previous objections to the office it says here afghanistan to disband a regular police force set up under nato so it says says the president has taken steps to disband a little-known irregular police force financed by American military with members in at least four northern provinces. So the decision appeared uh, to be aimed at stopping at least some of the militias that are beyond the control of the Karzai, Karzai administration. And talking about militiamen. Uh, moving on here, Afghanistan, China to sign first oil contract. Afghanistan will sign a deal Wednesday allowing China's state-owned National Petroleum Corporation to become the first foreign firm to produce oil oil in the country, the ministry said. Then moving on here to Pakistan, China's increasing presence in Pakistan's Kashmir causing concern in the Indian Army. Uh, China has increased the presence of its military engineers in Pakistan, administered uh, Kashmir, a senior army officer said. Finishing up, although the exact number of the People's Liberation Army uh, men and engineers engaged in building infrastructure across the line of control is not known. Their numbers have increased in recent months, the senior commander said. That's right. I think there were, um, the Chinese uh, were, were had like a, a fleet out there in the Indian Ocean. And they might even be building a base, a naval base. Uh, it says here, boat laden with surface-to-air missiles stopped in Finland on its way to China. This is a, a, from the 21st. Finnish officials find 160 tons of explosives and 69 Patriot missiles on the British registered cargo ship bound for Shanghai. Next up, Chinese regime sentenced dissidents over Christmas holiday season. That's right. A few days before Christmas, the regime officially sentenced rights lawyer. Um, I can't pronounce these words, so I'm sorry if I butcher them, but uh, Xi Sheng uh, to three years in prison. On December 3rd, 23rd, they sentenced dissident Cheng Wai, or Wei to nine years for inciting subversion of state power. The day after Christmas, veteran activists of the 1989 Tiananmen 
Tiananmen Square protests, uh, Chen Zi was given a 10-year sentence for publishing essay critical of the regime. So that was her Christmas present, her little stocking stuffer. Uh, respected comrade Kim Jong-un uh, declared son of the 21st century. So he's going to be the sun dictator, the sun leader, the rising sun, I guess. It says here, the West tries out old tricks in Russia. Long before the state Duma elections of December 4th, the ultra-rightist and liberal mass media collaborating with anti-Russian elements in the West, which they are, basically, uh, I've covered that, it's well documented, forecast that the ruling United Russia Party would suffer a serious defeat. They organize all sorts of sociological surveys to support this, who thoroughly plan campaigns and to push their predictions on the crisis facing Russian leaders and sharply declining rating of uh, Prime Minister Vladimir Putin and President Dmitry Medvedev. Says here that the West hopes that uh, with Western support, separatists and criminals will take the next step to cause the collapse of Russia. In the writings, uh, Zbigniew Brzezinski and former Secretary of State Madeleine Albright have described scenarios of an expected collapse of Russia and even redrawn its national border. That is true. Remember, I, uh, I've covered this or mentioned this so many times about Zbigniew Brzezinski taking credit for bringing down communist Russia by using the Taliban in Afghanistan. Says here, uh, Kazakhstan's U.S. ambassador calls video of police shooting protesters in the back shocking so things are heating up in Kazakhstan don't forget the links will be posted in YouTube's video description results from Russia's parliamentary vote earlier this month are studded with red flags that suggest broad electoral fraud that's right analysis of the results points to widespread fraud so this is statistical anomaly that's what at least what the experts say but I think it's propaganda it says here that uh, Putin just fired a Kremlin's puppet master the enigmatic and powerful public relations advisor Vladislav Surkov out from the Kremlin according to Reuters. I guess it's a big deal for the embattled Russian government and a huge admission of failure for the Putin or for Putin personally as Reuters put it Surkov's system was Putin's system. Next up we have Putin promises Russians psychotherapy to build their confidence. Who is behind mystery spy devices dropped over Syria? This is from December 23rd, but it was on December 14th that residents uh, noticed in a small Syrian town uh, unidentified aircraft circling overhead, dropping several small items attached to many pairs. I guess these devices uh, were little spy gadgets, and most of them were made in Germany, and it says they seem to transmit GPS coordinates. We have Syria fires new Russian missiles and exercises a warning to Turkey and NATO. Then again in Turkey, uh, they arrest anti-NATO protesters. They were protesting against Ankara's plan to host a NATO missile system in the country. Russia test fires its own long-range missiles successfully. It says here, a new warhead aimed at developing a domestic missile shield capable of encountering U.S. NATO missile. Th so, what happens? Oh, strong quake jolts Russia. An earthquake measuring 6.6 .6 on the Richter scale has struck southeastern Russia. How convenient. Putin calls for talks with opposition. So, he wants to uh, hold talks with the protest movement, adding that it's rather impossible as they uh, neither have a leader nor an agenda. Putin said, I do not even know who spoke there. Uh, do they have a common platform? No. Is there anyone to talk to? We need to discuss all of their issues or problems, but this requires some sense. Putin said on Wednesday, he went on to say that the opposition is made up of liberal movements, communists, and nationalists who have failed to reach a common set of demands. As commons came amid ongoing public protests against the alleged fraud parliamentary election held on December 4th. Alawi says Iraq had for sectarian autocracy, then the head of the Sunni-backed Iraqi political bloc said stands on the brink of disaster and issued a list of demands on Wednesday in a political crisis triggered by charges against the Sunni leader. Then we have this. Remember this? Iraq's leader becoming a new dictator, deputy warrants on December 13th. Somalia appears to be UK's next target for a Libya-style intervention. Some think it was going to be Syria says here, but thanks to the strong opposition in the United Nations Security Council from China and Russia, it appears that the foreign intervention for supposed humanitarian ends has been averted in Syria, at least for the time being. Iran also seemed like a logical target for the globalist war machine, but due to their relatively, relatively strong military and strategic ties, it appears that it is somewhat a contentious issue. However, Somalia is a much easier target, seeing that it does not have the massive military infrastructure, nor numerous alliances would help deter a foreign Then we have four killed in Ivory Coast clashes. The fighting broke out between a youth who was killed after clashing with a soldier of the Republican forces of Ivory Coast in the town. 
These forces consist mainly of supporters of Ivory and President uh, Alassane Atara, and uh, following the incident, residents of a nearby village attacked the FRCI post. One soldier was killed, and the other succumbed to his injuries. The number of deadly clashes involving this Republican force has risen since the end of the 2010-2011 post-election crisis in which more than 3,000 people were killed. Ivory Coast, which is the largest cocoa producer, had caused cocoa prices to go up, but don't worry, shipments are up. Thank you.